although often maligned, misunderstood, persecuted by many mainline Christians within fundamentalism, esoteric Christianity has a rich history in seeing Christianity as a mystery religion with very ancient roots esoteric meaning further in or hidden or obscured is a term as it's associated with Christianity is esoteric Christianity as a form which refers to an ensemble of spiritual currents which regard Christianity as a mystery religion and profess the existence and possession of certain esoteric or unknown hidden doctrines or practices that are hidden from the public but accessible only to a narrow circle of enlightened, initiated, or highly educated people. Many Orthodox Christians criticize it as being a form of New Age or as an outright heresy incompatible with the exoteric counterpart of Christianity. Therefore it's labeled as heterodox or heretical Christian theology. It includes in its teachings the four canonical gospels, various apocalyptic literature, and apocryphal texts that many mainstream Christians do not adhere to or find to be unnecessary. Christianity as a mystery religion the word used by early Christians to indicate the Christian mystery Mysterion. The Old Testament versions use the word Mysterion as an equivalent for the Hebrew secret or secret inner teachings. Proverbs 20 19, Judith 2 2, Sirach 22 27, 2 Maccabees 13 21. In the New Testament, the word mystery which is where we get the word mystic and by derivative esoteric or hidden mysteries is applied ordinarily to the sublime revelation of the gospel Matthew 13:11 Colossians 2:2 2, 2, 1 Timothy 3:9 1 Corinthians 15:51 15, and to the incarnation and life of the Savior in his manifestation by the preaching of the Apostles Romans 16 25 Ephesians 3 4 Ephesians 6 19 and Colossians 1 26 and 4 3 theologians give the name mystery to revealed truths that surpass the powers of natural reason so in a narrow sense, the mystery is a truth that transcends the created intellect, which is another reason perhaps why many Orthodox fundamentalist Christians reject the idea, the impossibility of obtaining a rational comprehension of the mystery leads to an inner or hidden way of comprehension of the Christian 
mystery which is indicated by the term esoteric meaning inner or hidden or in esoteric Christianity. Two well-known branches that identify with these mysteries perhaps are the Rosicrucian Society or the Theosophical schools of thought pertaining to the Christian religion. They delve into the science, the spiritual sciences of the Christian mysteries as well. Even though, even though they're revealed and believed, the mystery remains nevertheless obscure and veiled during the mortal life if the deciphering of the mysteries made possible by esotericism does not intervene. This esoteric knowledge would allow a deep comprehension of the Christian mysteries which otherwise would remain obscure and perhaps, as in history, suppressed and repressed away from the mainstream ancient roots. Some modern scholars believe that in the early stages of Christianity, a nucleus of oral teachings were inherited from Palestinian and Hellenistic Judaism, which formed the basis of a secret oral tradition, which in the 4th century came to be called the Disciplina Arcani, or hidden knowledge. Important influences on esoteric Christianity are the Christian theologians Clement of Alexandria, Eurygen, the main figures of the catechetical school of Alexandria. Eurygen was a most prolific writer. According to Epiphanarius, he wrote about 6,000 books, making it difficult task to define the central core of his teachings. The original Greek text of his main theological work, De Principalis, only survives in fragments, while a 5th century Latin translation was cleared of controversial teachings. The original Greek text of his main theological work which makes it difficult for modern scholars to rebuild Eurygen's original thoughts. Thus, it is unclear whether reincarnation and the pre-existence of souls formed part of Eurygen's beliefs. Nevertheless, many esoteric and Christian mystics still hold to the doctrine that reincarnation is a given fact. While hypothetically, considering a complex multiple world transmigration scheme, De Principalis Eurygen de denies reincarnation in unmistakable terms in his work. Despite this apparent contradiction, most modern esoteric Christian movements refer to Eurygen's writings along with other church fathers and biblical passages to validate these ideas as part of the esoteric Christian tradition. Early modern esotericism in the Middle Ages forms of Western esotericism, for example, alchemy and astrology, and I would add to that, biblical astronomy were constructed on 
Christian foundations, combining Christian theology and doctrines with esoteric concepts. Giovanni Pico della Maridala's Apologia, published in 1489, states that there are two types of quote-unquote magic, which are theurgy or divine magic and demonic magic, apparent opposites. These disciples were explained as the operation of the stars, just as alchemy was the operation of the sun, and astrology the operation of the moon. Kabbalah was also an active discipline. Esoteric Christian practitioners might practice these forms or traditions, which made them adepts, alchemists, astrologists, and hermetic Kabbalists, while still being esoteric Christian practitioners of a passive discipline which helped them better use the quote-unquote mystery knowledge they gained from the elite or higher beings. In the 16th and 17th centuries, this was followed up by the development of theosophy Anthroposophy and Rosicrucianism and the Behemist movement also developed around this time, as did Freemasonry. Modern forms of esoteric Christianity Modern forms of esoteric Christian movements admit reincarnation among their beliefs. And for some unknown reason, perhaps and strangely, it's vehemently opposed by orthodox mainstream Christian leaders. They also adopt a complex energetic structure for the human being, such as the etheric, astral, mental, and causal bodies. These movements point out the need of an inner spiritual work, which will lead to the renewal of the human person according to the Pauline sense. Max Heindel and Rudolf Steiner gave several spiritual exercises in their writings to help the evolution of the follower in the same direction are Tommaso Palamedici's writings which aim at developing esoteric or ascetic techniques and meditations according to all these esoteric scholars the ensemble of these techniques, often related with Eastern meditation practices such as chakra meditation and visualization, will lead to salvation or liberation and to the total renewal of the human being. This process usually implies the constitution of a spiritual body apt to the experience of resurrection. See 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and therefore called in Christian terms the resurrection body. Some esoteric Christians today also incorporate some and New Age and traditional magical practices in their beliefs, such as Kabbalah, Goishi alchemy, astrology, and hermeticism. A brief definition from 
the religion wiki page on esoteric Christianity. Another description from Integral Life from Father Thomas Keating, Raleigh Stanich, and Ken Wilbur, who had some words to say about esoteric spirituality, emphasizing intelligence or spirituality or spiritual intelligence. Father Thomas Keating, Ken Wilbur, and Raleigh Stanich discuss the inside and the outside of the Christian tradition, exploring the rich contemplative legacy that exists at the core of the world's largest religion. It has often been said that there is a central paradox in the role of religion throughout history. On the one hand, religion has been the single greatest cause of war and suffering. On the other, religion has been the single greatest source of redemption, salvation, and liberation for humanity. How can we possibly make sense of this double-edged dagger? How can we reconcile the very best qualities of religion with the very worst? Any meaningful discussion about religion must take at least two different dimensions of the religious experience into account. First, there is religion in its exoteric or outer form, largely consisting of rituals, beliefs, doctrines, and dogma of a particular tradition. This is what the majority of people think of when they hear the word religion, often associating it with old myths, pre-rational thinking, and obsolete ideologies. Whenever you hear Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, or any of the other new atheists railing against God and religion, it is always this mythic outer exoteric form that they are attacking. This is another side to religion. By definition, it is very often overlooked, the inner, hidden, inner, esoteric core that invites us to actually experience divinity for ourselves. This esoteric core is almost entirely composed of vivid and occasionally enigmatic descriptions of spiritual devotion, transcendent truths, and timeless realities. But there is so much more than just poetry at the heart of religion. Esoteric spirituality represents a very real technology of transformation, offering profoundly enriching practices of meditation and prayer to help us all experience these things for ourselves, rather than just taking it as a matter of faith. And it is this, perhaps, that many religionists or orthodox fundamentalism has a grudge, perhaps, against the esoteric forms. They want to tell you how and what to believe. Whereas on the other hand, the esoteric traditions are experiential and individualistic. And it is the different experiences for every soul. Every religion was founded by a mystic who had a direct experience of spiritual reality. With Christianity, it was Jesus Christ. Whether we are talking about Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, Sufism, or any other major spiritual tradition, and every religion has been populated by various saints and sages and mystics throughout the years, all of whom have helped to deepen and refine these teachings and practices as well as retranslate them for new generations. And yet, as prevalent as genuine mysticism 
is in all these traditions, many people in today's world go their entire lives without ever hearing about these aspects of religious experience. There is a history of deep suppression. Oftentimes, Western spiritual seekers look beyond the religion of their childhood, usually to exotic Eastern traditions like Zen Buddhism or Taoism, because they perceive these traditions as being steeped in the esoteric, and they indeed are, not realizing that Eastern spirituality is just as bound to the ritualistic trappings as exoteric religion as Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. They often do not even recognize the rich legacy of esoteric spirituality that exists in their own tradition. And this is unfortunate. Hiding right in plain sight simply because we are too close to our own cultural perceptions, too burnt out on the mythic dogma of our childhood, and too alone in the dark without anyone pointing us in the right direction. Moving ahead <clears throat> to the last paragraph. For a closer look at the theoretical aspects of esoteric and exoteric spirituality, be sure to check out Fully Human, Fully Divine, where we discuss the ideas of states and stages of consciousness by taking a closer look at two of the world's foremost Christian thinkers, theologian James Fowler and mystical writer Evelyn Underhill, exploring ways to integrate these two pioneers into a more comprehensive view of the Christian experience. An assimilation of the inner and the outer, the exoteric and the esoteric. I would also encourage you to explore integral Christianity as well. A book recommendation going by the title of Esoteric Christianity, A Tragic History, The Church's Holy War Against the Spirit of Sophia Description In early Christianity, the sun-like figure of Christ gripped the imagination of men and women through a potent mixture of mystery and wonder. Christ was seen then as the very embodiment or incarnation of the Gnostic spirit of divine Wisdom, Sophia, feminine, the sacred feminine. In order to connect faithfully with Jesus in our time, we need to understand his Christianity correctly. To do this, we must go back to its Gnostic, mystical, esoteric roots in Sophia. This book points the way. The early Christian movement was far more spiritually alive and powerful than its modern counterpart, the institutional church. This early vibrancy was largely due to the influence of the divine Sophia. However, after about the third century with the rise of the Roman church, Sophia's spiritual light began to fade. Eventually, at the Church Council of Constantinople in 869 AD, the Holy Spirit of Sophia was pronounced non-existent and it was deemed heretical to believe in her spiritual reality. And so the patriarchy began its authoritarian stance and suppressed the Holy Spirit aspect of Sophia. 
making her masculine, fully masculine. And with the abandonment of the sacred feminine, the abandonment of Sophia in Western Christianity is one of the greatest tragedies that has befallen humanity. The reason for this tragedy is that from the beginning of the Christian movement, the all-male Roman clergy abhorred the wisdom of Sophia and her ancient mysteries. In fact, institutional Catholicism grew in strength only by allying itself with the crude, militant might of the Roman Empire and violently tried to stamp out the wise and magical light of Sophia, but it never fully succeeded, for miraculously she has survived, but only in that form which is called esoteric Christianity. This particular book gives an historical account of the horrible abuse and repression of Sophia down the ages, as well as an account of the defilement of her wisdom that is contained in the sacred vessel of the Holy Grail. This particular book is truly one that can change your attitude to life and even change your life itself. A brief introduction from the introduction segment of this book, quote, Christianity takes many forms. This book attempts to elucidate and outline the historical development of a lesser known but surely one of the most mysterious and fascinating forms of this great spiritual religious movement, esoteric Christianity. Esoteric Christianity differs from mainstream Christianity in a number of significant ways. One is that it reveals fundamental and relevant information and knowledge pertaining to the essence of Christianity, which has never gained a wide currency. From about the middle of the 4th century onwards, precise knowledge of the spirit or the hidden spirit world a knowledge upon which Christianity was actually founded, was discouraged and later actively suppressed. Eventually, it almost totally disappeared from public view. Another important aspect of esoteric Christianity is that it places Christianity itself into a wide, much deeper and wider historical context than is usual. In doing this, it also reveals Christianity as a religion which, though centered upon the historical event of the Incarnation, actually is rooted in a spiritual tradition much more ancient than this. Esoteric Christianity can thus be said to be perennialist in nature. This means, among other things, that it represents that aspect of Christianity which can transcend what conventionally separates it from other religions, i.e. exclusivity, because it is a form of Christianity which gives a Christian expression to something which is in fact a universal experience. The thirst for true knowledge of the Divine Spirit, knowledge of man's true origins, makeup and destiny, something which is always from time to time immemorial expressed itself as a desire to know that being that we, for simplicity's sake, always refer to as God. <laughs>